My name's Albert Ferro. I'm a professor of cardiovascular clinical pharmacology at King's College London, and I work as a consultant at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospitals in London, running a hypertension clinic. So what we've been looking at over the last few years is uh, the role that uh, interaction between platelets and monocytes has in the generation of atherosclerosis. And what we found is that there's a very, very close correlation between the formation of monocyte platelet aggregates and uh, the uh, degree of atherosclerosis that's present. Um, and there's a linear relationship between MPA formation and things like hypertension, um, and also there's a relationship with cholesterol levels as well. So we think that the binding of platelets to monocytes uh, is likely to be causal in atherogenesis because what seems to happen, and we've shown this in our experiments, is that that binding causes the monocytes to become more pro-inflammatory and more pro-atherogenic. They're more likely to stick to the vascular endothelium and from there to migrate into the subintima and cause atherosclerosis. As yet, we haven't got any direct evidence of that in humans. We've got some evidence in, in animal models, and what we're hoping to do in the future is to translate that into humans and, and hopefully show that there is a direct causal relationship. In terms of acute coronary syndrome, uh, we don't know the answer as yet, but by inference, if we, uh, as we believe, that platelet binding to monocytes causes those monocytes to become more pro-inflammatory, and we know that acute coronary syndrome in itself has an underlying inflammatory basis, it is likely that um, MPA formation is involved in acute coronary syndrome as well. But those are questions that, that we need to do further research on. So dual antiplatelet therapy is well um, established now in the treatment of patients with acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction, and in those having um, intracoronary uh, stents uh, placed. Um, there is a long-standing debate as to whether dual antiplatelet therapy really is superior to P2Y12 inhibition alone. And certainly we and others have some in vitro evidence that adding aspirin on top of a P2Y12 inhibitor may not add very much, if anything, to the um, antiplatelet effect of, of um, the P2Y12 inhibitor. So that's a long-standing debate, and, and, and I don't think we really know the answer to that. All we can say is that all the clinical trials have been done with a P2Y12 inhibitor on top of aspirin um, and have shown added benefit, but what we don't know is the other way around. If a patient's already established on a P2Y12 and you add in aspirin, do you get any added benefit from that? And that is highly questionable. Um, what we do also know is that dual antiplatelet therapy gives you an increased risk of bleeding um, and so it comes down to risk benefits uh, and at least for acute coronary syndrome the benefits outweigh the risk. Uh, if we're talking about patients outside of that situation, so patients with stable atherosclerotic disease or indeed patients who, who you're treating for primary prevention, I think it becomes much more problematic uh, because there's a, a much smaller benefit to be gained and the risk of bleeding is still there. And so the, 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 there is not a clear uh, signal of benefit over risk in that situation. So I think at the present state of knowledge, I think dual antiplatelet therapy is well established and uh, is indicated in patients with acute coronary syndrome and in those post-PCI. But outside of that situation, in the stable patient, I think uh, there is no evidence to support its use at the moment.